this is Whitney George, Documentation Specialist for Aperio. Today we're going to be taking a look at user experience testing and exploring how using the automated testing features and CMC can make this process more efficient. So let's start with the basics here. What is UAT? UAT stands for User Experience Testing, and it's essentially a dress rehearsal for production. So during UAT, users and administrators are guided through the testing experience through test sessions so that they can provide some authentic testing scenarios that we can validate to ensure that the solution that's been built is going to deliver the desired results. Okay, now that we're logged into CMC, let's take a look at how user experience testing will actually be executed. We'll also take a look at the automated testing features in CMC and how we'll use those to complete the testing. So UAT testing takes place at the product level, which is where we're at now. UAT test scenarios, which CMC refers to as test suites. These are high-level flows that are being tested, and each one represents a real-world set of activities. So let's take a look at some of the information that we have under our product. If we scroll down, we'll see that for user experience testing, test suites will be created from our epics. So we see that directly below the epic section of the product are our test suites. Today, let's take a look at TS11. We can see here that the test suite name for this test suite is returns, refunds, and discounts process. So based on the test suite name that we just reviewed, we have a sense of the functionality that's going to be tested within this suite. Now test suites are a collection of test cases. You can see how they all relate back to the larger scenario that we're taking a look at today. Now let's take a look at the current test result status. You can see here that two of the test cases have already been tested. One, test case nine, has failed, and the other, test case 10, has passed. We then have three additional test cases that have not been tested yet. So let's take a look at one of these untested test cases to see how we get to these test results of either a pass or a fail. So we're going to use this first untested test case. We know it's untested because, again, we can see here in the current test results that it's listed as untested. So if we click on the name of the test case, we're going to be provided with some test case details. So again, the name of this test case is verify that RMA record locks after submission. So that's the process that we're testing here. If we scroll down, we see that within a test case, there are a collection of test steps. So in UAT, we test with test scripts. CMC refers to those as test steps. Test steps are literally a step-by-step -step instruction of how to execute a test. So let's explore the test case that we have here of verifying the RMA record locks after submission by taking a look at the steps that we would take to run that test. So we can see by looking at the information in the test step section that each test step is a single step in the process of being able to validate what's being tested in the test case. So what we're testing in this test case is that the RMA record is going to lock after submission. So we can see by the test step name that in this specific scenario we need to try this same process being logged in as multiple users. So let's say that we go through the first step and then we're logged in as a field service tech that everything goes as planned. So that means that this step has passed its testing process and we want to log that. So in order to log it, we need to click on the test step number and that takes us into an area that's going to show us some test results. So we don't have any test results for this test step yet, so we want to log a new one. We do that by clicking new test result. And now we have the ability to fill in some details here. So you can see that there are some fields that pre-populate. Those can be edited if they need to be, but for the purposes of this test step, they're all accurate. What we want to do is modify the status. And since everything went as anticipated when we tested this step, we are going to mark this as passed. We're going to fill in the browser we were using when we did the test, as well as the environment. 
the log section, we can put that this was passed, um, the, the record locked as anticipated. We're going to save this. And now we can see that we've generated a new test result. We've navigated back to the test case level so that we can again review our test steps. So we can see here that after logging that test result, we now have an updated current test result status for that first test step. It passed, so since we logged that result, it's now showing here. Let's say that we test the next step and we attempt to modify this RMA record logged in as an accounting user and we don't get quite so lucky this time. We find a bug and we find that the record does not lock as anticipated when we log in under this user. We want to make sure that we log that as well. So again, same process, we're going to click on the test step number and we click new test result to log our new test result. So exact same screen as last time, same information is going to auto-populate. We will move to our status though and select failed instead of passed. We'll fill in our browser and environment information. This info is important for when we go through to find the fix. We want QA to know exactly under what conditions um, the failure occurred. And then again, so the log info or the log section is always important, but particularly important when we have a step that fails because we need to log exactly what the failure was. So the anticipated result here is that the RMA record would remain locked. Um, let's say that this step failed because when we tested this, uh, the user found that while um, the inline editing function was locked, the edit button was still live. So we've logged that. We're now ready again to save. And we can verify that our new test result was logged. And it was. So when a test step fails, there is an additional step in the process that we didn't have to worry about when our test step passed, um, and that's logging an issue. So when we find that we have a step that fails, we want to log that issue to ensure that it is documented and that um, a fix is found. So we're in the test results section here under the details for the test result that failed. So we can see all that information that we just logged just a moment ago. And we see here now that we also have the option here to log an issue, which we want to do. So we click log issue. So this is where we can include all of the information about the issue that we found. So we'll fill in an issue name that just gives a brief description of the problem that we found when we attempted the test. The defect type is a drop-down menu. In this case, the defect is functional. We have who it was detected by and the date that it was detected. The severity is also a drop-down menu, and we've chosen critical here. Um, this is something that does need to be resolved rather quickly. It's a new issue. We found this while we were in production. Um, you can even attach a screen capture that shows exactly what the issue looks like. So again, when finding a re resolution, it's really easy to see um, what the problem looked like from the perspective of the user. And the steps to reproduce section, it's best to number these. So you just choose that from formatting and then give a step-by-step -step process of how someone else could reproduce this problem. We filled in our expected result, which is that this RMA record would lock after submission. And then our actual result is another um, statement of the, of the problem here that the edit button was live after we submitted the record, um, which would allow for modifications when we don't want that to be a possibility. After entering all the relevant information about how to reproduce the problem, scroll down and click Save to log the issue. If you have additional questions about UAT or the testing process in CMC, feel free to reach out to us on the CMC Chatter. Also, if you'd like to view additional video content about testing in CMC, check out the Test Suite Overview video that outlines the test objects in CMC and how to use test suites in your testing process, 
as well as the QA automation overview video that documents how to use automated testing and CMC. Thanks for watching this video today to see a step-by-step -step of the UAT process and CMC.